This is the new pre-trip inspection. You get a checklist. This is the paper you're going to uh, be uh, given. Let's just go over the instructions really quick. This is important. You are only required to inspect the items on the CDL vehicle inspection checklist. That's this. You may use this checklist for your test and check off items as you have completed them. No additional markings or writing may be placed on this list, aka this paper. You must name, point to, and or touch and fully explain what you are inspecting. Each safety critical item for, if you do not do so, you will not get credit for the items. Again, touch and fully explain. Point to and or touch. Really important. Just do the items on the checklist. I know the old pre-trip version, there was a lot more detail and a lot more items. So it did get easier. So don't stress over this change. All right, let's head over to the truck. All right, guys, we're in the truck. I'm going to break this video up into two parts, but the pre-trip is one continuous thing when you get to the DMV. So I'm just going to break it up for the sake of making the videos easier to upload. So uh, first, you're going to be in the truck already. The examiner is going to, you know, go inside the building, check your paperwork, check your background, check your license, all that stuff. They're gonna come back outside. You're gonna be in the truck already. You do not have to get back out and tell them that you got in. Just mention, I got in with three points of contact. I have my seat belt on and the key is in the ignition. I'm going to turn it one click for the electricity so I can read my air gauges. Okay, my air gauges are above 90, so I need to pump them down to below 90. And again, we are getting prepared for a safe start. I must make sure that my truck is in neutral, so clutch down, truck is in neutral. Make sure my valve is out, which means my brakes are applied. Now, <clears throat> if at this time when your truck is still on, if you see one of these check engine lights come on, usually the heating core, this one says intake heater, but if the check engine light is on, just wait till it shuts off because the heater core is heating up. So don't ignite the engine while that's still on. Okay, so all we did was get prepared for a safe start. I put my seatbelt on, I'm under 90 PSI, my truck is in neutral, my brake is out, it is applied. I can now do a safe start. Okay, my ABS light blinked on and off, telling me it's working properly. My oil pressure rose within three to five seconds, telling me it's working properly. If it did not, I would shut the truck off. During this time, we're gonna wait for the air pressure to build up to 120, between 120 and 140. My governor cutoff valve should go off. It tells me that the air tanks are fully charged, the air system. Okay, now let's go back to the checklist for a second. While you're waiting for that, you're gonna have this checklist here. Again, use it. Even though some of you may memorize it and you may know the pre-trip, use the checklist because you would feel silly to miss something and you didn't even bother looking at the checklist. So make sure, come prepared. Get yourself a clipboard. Get yourself a pen. Don't be sitting here with the paper trying to draw on your leg and you're gonna rip the paper. It's gonna be a mess. You wanna be professional during this process. So, this is not in any particular order. You just have to complete all the items on the list, but we're not gonna do the outside before we do the inside. So the inside is all of this here. Okay, my air pressure's still building up, not doing anything. So you have air hydraulic brake test. Okay, my governor cutoff valve went off. That's what the noise was. Tells me the air tanks are fully charged, no leaks in the system. Now, we're gonna run through the in cab the same way we used to do it before the changes happened. So air and hydraulic, hydraulic, which we don't have any hydraulic, so you can, I'm just gonna cross that off so I don't confuse you guys, anything that says hydraulic. So air, brake, check. That's what we're gonna do now. Okay, put your clipboard down. Governor cutoff went off, means I'm ready for the brake test. First step, put your foot on the clutch. Put it in first gear, and the gears are written right on top of the stick. Hold the clutch down and turn the truck off. Okay, once the engine settles, remove your foot from the clutch. Turn the truck back on for electricity only. 
So I should see the gauges sweep. And I'm going to push my valve in, which will release my brake. Okay, it's the same way we used to do it before. Now, I am now set up for the brake test. The first step I need to do, I'm gonna check the one minute hold. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake with about medium pressure. You wanna have, you wanna hear the air come out, but you don't wanna hold it so hard that you have to hold your foot that hard. So make sure you hear the air. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna hold that for a minute and 10 seconds. You tell the examiner one minute. After my one minute is up, I'm gonna release my brake. I did not lose any more than three PSI within one minute. Tells me there's no leaks. I will pump the air, uh, the valves, the bleh. I will pump the gauges down to below 60 PSI, at which my low air pressure warning light should come on. And buzzer. Okay, low air warning light and buzzer are on, telling me they work properly. I will now pump it down to below 40. That will pop my valve out, indicating my spring brakes are working. So I'm going to keep my eyes here. I'm not going to look at the gauges. The gauges don't mean anything because it's 40 and below. So it could be 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, 2, 1, and 0. It popped out. See, it popped out around 25. So it's always a random number, but it's always below 40. My spring brake popped out, telling me that it's working properly. At this time, go ahead and just turn that off because the beeping will drive you crazy. Grab your checklist again. We're gonna check the next item that we need to do. So <clears throat> we're gonna do the pre-trip the same way you know we did it before. Again, I said this is in no particular order. So if you do it in the order it's in, it's very confusing. So we just did the air brake check, okay? Parking and trailer brake check, that's the tug test. We're gonna do that after the inspection. Right now I need to do another safe start, that's first. So go ahead, and that's not written on here. You should just know how to do this process. That's why the checklist doesn't give you the answers but it helps guide you along so don't look for answers on the checklist it's just there as a guide you still need to study this okay we're going to do another safe start air pressure is below 90 my valve is out my truck is not in neutral i'm going to go ahead and put it in neutral now <clears throat> turn the truck on what do we mention first oil pressure came up three to five seconds if it did not i would shut the truck off my ABS light came on and off telling me it's working properly. During this time, I will do the in-cab inspection. Now this is where it changed a little bit. We're gonna grab our checklist here. And we're gonna go down the list. So again, I said this is the tug test here, so you're not doing that yet. Service brake test, that's part of the tug test also. Lighting indicators, let's go on to that. So I'm gonna go ahead. My left signal indicator, my right signal indicator. My four-way flasher indicators are working and turn my headlights on, turn the headlight switch on to get the high beam indicator working. Okay, so all four lights, left, right, four ways, high beams are working properly. Going back to my list, lighting indicators. Okay, we did the brake test, check that off. Lighting indicators, check that off. Emergency equipment, that's next. My fire extinguisher, 10 pound ABC fire extinguisher, fully charged, up to date, secured with a pin. My three reflective triangles, again, someone's gonna be sitting here, but they're down here. My three reflective triangles are secured in their red box, they're clean, not cracked, they're broken. And I should have spare fuses somewhere on the truck. My seat belt, again, I put it on before, but again, it's on, it's secured to the truck, it's not ripped, frayed, or torn it unlatches and it catches properly okay my emergency equipment is done next up is windshield and traffic monitoring devices we already did the reflectors so windshield my windshield is clean not cracked or broken no cracks larger than one inch no illegal stickers and we just check the seal on the windshield the windshield seal is not dry rotted not cracked there are no visible leaks Okay, clean, not cracked or broken, no cracks larger than an inch, no illegal stickers, don't forget that. Okay, windshield, you can check that off, that is done. Wipers and washers, so let's go ahead. My wiper arm is not bent or broken. 
My wiper blade is not dry rotted, not cracked, it's not torn. And my wiper, my washer fluid, I'll go ahead and hold down the button. It's empty right now. I will fill it up when I stop the truck. Okay, if the windshield wiper fluid comes out, the washer fluid, just mention that it's cleaning the windshield properly. Okay, next, so we wiped that, we wiped it off. We checked that off. Oh, my governor cutoff valve just went off. They, and you have to mention that no matter where you are on this list, stop. Governor cutoff valve went off, telling me the tanks are full, system is fully charged, no leaks. And then we're gonna continue back to where we were. Heater and defroster. Let's go ahead, put on the defroster setting first. Okay, I feel air coming through my vents, which means there are no obstructions in the vents. I would use my defrost to clean the windshield of any frost or uh, fog. So I'm gonna go ahead, put it, leave it there, put it on the upper and lower setting. Wait till you feel air coming through your vents. Okay, I feel air coming through. There are no obstructions in my vents. Okay, turn that off. We can do heater and defroster, check. And horns are last. This truck only has a city horn. Some of the other trucks have air horns that are up here or here, but this truck in particular, the B manual, only has a city horn. The city horn is working properly. Okay, that is all for the inspection. So now you're gonna go to the, you're gonna go back a couple points here. We're gonna do the tug test. So first thing I'm gonna do, put down your checklist again. I'm gonna go ahead and put in first gear, clutch down, first gear. You're gonna go ahead and push the brake in. No, you're not the brake, sorry, we're gonna test the brake. Leave your brake out. I'm gonna slowly release the clutch, leave it in first gear. Once I feel the truck pull and my brake is holding me in place, put the clutch back down, put it back in neutral, okay? My spring brake is holding properly, telling me it's working. Now I'm gonna go ahead, put in first gear again. Push the valve in this time, and we are going to go ahead and remember, there's no trailer on this, so we only have a parking brake. Now we're gonna do the service brake test, okay? Service brake check is gonna be the service brake. I'm gonna go ahead, start to lift up on the clutch. Once I feel the tug, release the service brake, clutch down, use the brake again. Wait till you come to a full stop, secure the truck, neutral, brake out. My truck has come to a full stop, telling me the service brake is working properly. It did not pull to either side, telling me the brakes are wearing evenly, all the components are in good condition. Okay, now you go back, secure the truck, secure the truck, make sure your headlights are on, make sure your four ways are on, turn the truck off, you're gonna take the key with you, exit the truck with three points of contact, and we're gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of this checklist. I wanna cut this video here, We'll start a new one. Front of vehicle, engine area. That's what we want to focus on. Lenses, fluid levels, fluid and air leaks, steering systems. All right. So I'm just going to leave this up here. So that way I can hold the phone. So we're going to go over the lenses. Lenses meaning the lights. So I'm going to go ahead and check the lights. Clean, not cracked, they're broken. Clear. Properly illuminated, four ways, clean, not cracked or broken, they're clear. Proper color amber, properly illuminated. Okay, the marker lights on top, you can see them on top of the cab, proper color amber, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. Okay, so again, you can take your pen. This is where it's good to have a clipboard because you're gonna be walking around. So again, we're gonna go ahead and check off the lenses. Now we got fluid levels, fluid and air leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hood. So as you remember from before, we used to do a lot more detail on the outside in the front. All they want are the lights. So when you open up the hood, you have to have two hands here. I'm holding the phone, so I'm gonna use one. One foot here and one foot on the floor. Four points of contact. Don't let the hood crash down, do the passenger side first. So again, fluids. So we're just gonna do a general check. I have my coolant reservoir here. I have my windshield washer reservoir. I'm gonna check both reservoirs, make sure they're not cracked and they're not leaking any fluid. I'll check all the hoses associated with the reservoirs, make sure they're all clamped. There's no cuts, no abrasions in the hose. Again, the hoses are not leaking. They have fluid in them. If the levels are low, I will fill them up to the manufacturer's specs. 
Okay, so do a general overview. Look underneath the truck. Any wires or hoses hanging down? I don't see any. There's nothing leaking underneath the truck. Okay, so we're gonna go to the other side of the truck. Again, we're just checking fluid levels right now. So this side of the truck, I have my power steering fluid reservoir. It says it on the side. Any filters, reservoirs, anything with fluid going through them, check they're not cracked or broken. There's nothing leaking. All the hoses are okay. They're not cut, they're not broken. There's no leaking. Okay, make sure there's no oil leaking also from the dipstick and the fill tube, which is on top. Make sure there's nothing leaking from there. You're also listening for any air leaks. So on this side, you do have the air compressor. Just mentioned I'm listening for any audible leaks and any of the air hoses, you're listening for audible leaks. Okay, so let's go back over by our checklist. I have my checklist here. Okay, have my pen. We did the fluid levels. The fluid and air leaks. Now we're gonna do the steering systems. Okay, I'm gonna bring this with me. So the steering system, let's go ahead and do that. That's the same as we did before. This is a little bit more involved. Okay, so the steering system starts with the steering shaft, which is right here. Go ahead and grab it, turn it, no more than two inches of play. My U-joints are properly secured with hardware. They're tight and it's properly greased. My steering gearbox, which is this piece here, it's not leaking, not cracked or broken, secured to the frame. My pitman arm, my drag link, my steering knuckle, and my tie rod, which is down there, all four pieces, they're straight, not cracked or broken, they're secured with castle nuts and cotter pins, okay? And they're all properly greased at the joints. So your steering system, your steering systems, you can go ahead and mention the power steering pump too. You can't see it, it is under the air compressor, just mention that it's not leaking. Okay, so that is good. Steering system is complete. Remember, you can only make checks on here. Do not draw on the checklist. Now we're gonna go to the steering axle. You're gonna see where it says tires, rims, lug nuts, springs, airbags. So you got suspension, you got the brakes, and you got the steering, so the steering axle. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it in the order that they have it so you don't confuse yourself. Unless you remember the old way, then you just go ahead and do it. But let's go ahead and do the tires first. So let's go ahead and check that off. We're going to do the tires right now. That's the first one on that list. My tires, the steering tires specifically. There's no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts in the sidewalls. They're beaded and seated to their rims. We're going to go ahead and check the treads. Make sure the treads are not damaged, they're not cut, they're not ripped. They can be no less than 230 seconds sorry they can be no less than 430 seconds of an inch i would use a tread depth gauge three different spots to make sure it's wearing out evenly these cannot be recapped and they cannot be regrooved again no less than 430 seconds of an inch okay my tires on this side is done let's go ahead and do the rims next so my rims they're not cracked or broken they're round no illegal welding I'll check the outer and the inner rim. Again, just make sure they're beaded and seated to the tires. Okay, my lug nuts, that's what's next. Go ahead and check off lug nuts. I have 10 lug nuts, they're all present. They are tight. If they were loose, I would see rust streaks coming down from behind or white powder if this was an aluminum rim. Okay, what's next? Springs, airbags, and shocks. So the suspension system. So let's go to the inside again here. By suspension, let's go ahead and just uh, start with the hanger. So the hanger mounts, I have them on both ends. I'm gonna check to make sure they are not cracked or broken and they are secured to the frame. All the hardware is present and it's tight. The leaf spring, which is this piece here, it's not cracked or broken, no illegal welding. It's not shifting, it's not scissoring. And the saddle, which is this piece here, that's not cracked or broken. That's secured to the axle along with the leaf spring with the two U-bolts here, the U-bolts are in good condition, not cracked or broken, and they're secured with the four nuts underneath. Right there, okay? For this truck, there's a bump stop. Make sure it's secured, not, it's, it's present. It's not dry rotted or damaged. 
not all trucks have it so make sure if it's there mention it if not don't mention it shock absorber they all have it in the front shock absorber is not cracked or broken it's not leaking no visible leaks secured to the top and bottom brackets or the mounts whatever you want to say okay the steering the suspension system is done so again we did these springs the airbags no airbags up here and the shock absorbers we did brake lines hoses and leaks so we're gonna go ahead and do the whole brake system that's how you want to look at it okay give me a second of course my pen stopped working okay we're gonna do the brake lines so the brake system i have my brake chamber right here you mentioned that there's an air hose going into it no abrasions bubbles or cuts no audible leaks the abs wire no illegal tape corrosion or burns the brake chamber itself this piece no audible leaks secured with a c-clamp the push rod slack adjuster i would test it by pulling on the push rod there should be no more than one inch of play i'll check that all the hardware is securing these together these two pins and cotter pins okay we're gonna go inside the rim here you can't see it but behind this plate you have a brake shoe and the brake drum the brake shoe can be no less than a quarter inch and I will also check the brake shoe that there's no debris grease or oil between the brake shoe and the brake drum and the brake drum we're gonna check for any illegal welding or any cracks make sure it's in good condition and the brake drum again you can't see it but it's like inside the rim okay the brake system is done so brake contaminants okay that's what we just did that's between the brake shoe and the brake drum no debris grease or oil Okay, now we're gonna come here. Side of the vehicle, so we are done with the hood. You can go ahead and leave it open. We're gonna move to the side of the vehicle. And as you can see, there's not many items on the side. First thing you're gonna see, lenses and reflectors. So let's cross off brake contaminants. Ooh, it's hot out today. Okay, my pen died. Make sure you have a working pen on test day. Okay. Wow. Crazy. Okay. So side of vehicle, lenses and reflectors, traffic monitoring devices, battery, fuel tank, and frame. So Let's go ahead and do the first one. Lenses and reflectors. So for this truck, if you see any four-way flashers going off, you're going to mention that it's clean, not cracked, or broken. Mention the DOT tape is present. Proper color, white and red, all the way down the truck. My four-way flasher, proper color, amber. Clean, not cracked, or broken. Properly illuminated. Okay, that's for the side of the truck. Reflectors and lenses, check traffic monitoring devices okay we don't have to do that that's kind of like your four-way flashers uh, or if you had any cones or any reflectors on the outside so don't worry about that next up is battery so this is your battery box right here on this truck it's right next to the driver door here we're gonna check that the battery box is secured to the frame you do not open it but you mentioned that the batteries you would check for any leaks in the batteries they're not cracked and that the connections are not corroded Okay, next up is the fuel tank. Very important. The fuel tank is secured with metal straps and the rubber backing. They both have to be present and in good condition. The fuel cap, which is right here, I would do not open it on the test. You tell them I would open it, check to make sure that the rubber seal is present inside the cap and the chain is present. Okay, check the fuel tank itself. Make sure the fuel tank is not leaking. <sighs> I don't see any visible leaks. Okay, battery's done, that's done, that's done, that's done. And all that's left written here is frames. Okay, frames. Sorry if it's hard to see this video, guys. It's really sunny out here. I can't see the screen. Frames. Okay, mention the frame of the truck. It's straight, no illegal welding, no cracks, not broken, no illegal holes. Okay, and 
You have the rear of the vehicle. All I want you to mention are the lenses and the reflectors. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's just take a walk around the truck. We're gonna hit up the rest of the lighting indicators that we didn't hit. But as far as everything else goes, we checked everything off of this list. Okay, there is no exhaust. I don't see that mentioned on here. If you don't see it on the list, do not mention it. Okay, we got marker lights up on top of the truck. Proper color amber, clean, not cracked or broken. Again, we mentioned the four-way flasher already. Okay, did that. The reflective tape is good. We're gonna go to the back of the truck, look at the four-way flashers, make sure they're proper color red, clean, not cracked or broken, and they're working properly. Marker lights on top, proper color red, clean, not cracked or broken. Okay, you can also check the license plate light. That should be illuminated also. Come to the other side, check the four-way flasher on this side, proper color amber, clean, not cracked or broken, properly illuminated. And take another walk around. There's no more lights on this side. That would be the outside pre-trip. It is now the entire truck. You're gonna go ahead, close the hood, make sure you lock it and wait for further instructions.